Hello and welcome to a new series that focuses on companions. Yes, if that is something that tickles your fancy, then stick around. And we're not going to be playing with the Vlandian culture this time, even though personally I think that the Vlandian culture is probably, mm, I would say maybe tied first for the most powerful with the Empire culture, as I've explained in previous series. Culture actually matters quite a bit, at least early on, before you have your own faction with the loyalty of your towns and everything, but obviously that very much depends on if your liege wants to give you one of those things. But for this particular series, we're going to be playing with the Azerai culture. We haven't really played with them that much, and to be fair, because this is a companion focus, we're not, we are still going to be playing with too many Azerai units but we are going to start down in the desert area and we're going to attempt to expand now obviously because we are going to be focusing on companions mostly we are also going to be making it so that we actually have um shall we say Mm, more chances for them to die. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to be keeping uh, birth and death enabled because here's the thing. I really don't want to be in a situation where we basically don't have any dynamicism whatsoever for the series. I would love to have some kind of peril implemented. And um, I've spent the best part of the last couple of hours trying to mod the game and making it work with everything and if you'd like to check out the mods that i'm using in the description they are all listed there and they all have links to them and all that wonderful stuff we are currently playing on version 1.7.0 and um, in my opinion they've actually made some really cool changes as well really really cool changes and i'm very much looking forward to seeing what goes on here all right so Let's take a look. What are we going to be focusing on here? Well, that's the thing. I actually have no idea. Obviously, I very much love throwing weapons, but generally, I think it's probably a better idea for us to go for something else. Maybe bows, actually? We haven't focused on bows and one-handed in quite some time, so I'm thinking we might actually go for a one-handed shield build, or maybe a one-handed without a shield. I know... I did that in the Duelist series, and I absolutely love that character and, and the build associated with it. But I don't know, may, may, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for athletics and one-handed, and we're going to try and focus on that. Mm, athletics and bow, that might be fun. Yeah, athletics and bow, let's, let's do that as well. Athletics and throwing, no, not so much. Now, bear in mind, I've also downloaded a mod that increases the amount of gold present in the towns. Oh yeah, by the way, I found an updated version of Chaos's Tweaks as well, so for those of you that like that mod like I do, then you can uh, find it in the description as well. All right, so bow and tactic, I guess. I'm not a big fan of um, just going for bow and something. I, I want bow and something useful like athletics or riding or something like that. Although riding skill, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go for pole arm and one handed with this one. And now we have the ability to gain ourselves a trait. This is, uh, I wouldn't say specifically that important, but I would definitely say it could be really useful to give you a good, a good head start. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. So we have plus 20 renown, We've got some Valor, Vigor, you know, one-handed, two-handed. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be using two-handed weapons, I don't think, but we'll see. Anyway, as you see right here, now this is actually going to make a pretty significant difference to the overall game feel, because dependent on what age you choose, if you haven't seen the uh, last couple of series... You're going to start off with additional focus points and attribute points, the older you are. So for example, if I were to start at 50, I would gain eight focus points and four attribute points. Personally, I feel like this is absolutely insane. I think this is so amazing. It really is great. If you disable age and death and birth and all that stuff, this is basically the only way you want to go. This is the perfect start for you right there because you just get a, a huge boost, basically a huge, huge boost. 
However, that is going to mean, because I am not playing with those things disabled, that my character will probably end up dying a lot sooner. So that might be a bit problematic. So I think I'm probably going to start at age 30 here. I think this is a pretty decent age to begin with because you have a decent amount of focus points, but not too few. Because when you start at 20, you literally just have two. And I think that is a little bit too little for my liking. So we're going to start at 30 here and we're going to choose the uh, choose the standard bear if I can get there. There we go. OK, fantastic. Now let's um, let's go for let's go for a little bit of a different color here because we haven't really used red that much. So I'm thinking we'll probably go for something like that. That looks pretty nice, in my opinion. And now what we're going to do is obviously we are going to be calling ourselves Bear Tilt and we're going to be playing as Barney this time. Yeah, I know. It's been a while since we've seen Barney. It's um, <laughs> usually been Bruce or Byron mostly. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but apparently, yeah, that's... Um, that's what's been going on, and we're going to be playing on the Bannerlord difficulty preset with the exception of player received damage. That's going to be going down to 50% so that we don't die almost instantaneously upon entering a battle and getting hit in the face by a thrown weapon. But everyone else, every other you know, option here is going to remain the same. Clan member death possibility in battles being realistic. I could reduce it by 50%. Now, <laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing. If I literally keep it on realistic, I'm pretty sure my companions are going to die almost immediately, you know, on entering the second or third battle. But we're going to see how that goes. And we're not going to auto allocate the clan member perks either, because I'd very much like to do that myself. And we are going to keep birth and death enabled. So let's begin. And here we go. Yeah, super fast loading as well, by the way. I feel like they've done some really nice improvements on the optimization of the game and, and all that stuff. It really has made a pretty significant difference to how fast everything loads. And it feels to me like battles are much quicker too. Um, because I was obviously doing some testing. Anyway, let's have a look here. One-handed weapons, you have uh, their handling increased by 20%. Yeah, we're going to be taking that. Thank you very much. And I'm also going to be putting another two points in focus and another two points in vigor right there. I want to level up my one-handed skill as fast as possible. And then otherwise, I'm going to be putting points in athletics right there as well. Um, we are going to be basically remaining with endurance and all the other stats relatively low and obviously bow skill at the moment is not my priority but hopefully we're going to be able to do something with that. I actually gained a level, not entirely sure how I gained a level already but we're going to put that final point in athletics right there and then another point in endurance so we can actually start leveling that up. I'm going to just unequip the horse so that my athletic skill might be able to level up just a little bit. And I do have a number of other mods which I have not used before in any series. So you may want to check those out because I personally feel like they are going to be super, super nice. Uh, for those of you that appreciate mods, it is um, it's actually pretty cool. I like it. I like them. There is one that I installed that basically makes it that the AI is pretty much the same as the player in terms of their recruiting possibilities because I don't know whether you noticed this in previous series but whenever you are defeated well <laughs> you know sometimes whenever you're defeated you are going to then have to basically you know recruit all the way from scratch which is obviously a pretty big problem but Here's the thing, if you do that as an AI and the AI gets defeated, they are automatically going to be getting troops magically out of thin air or from a garrison or from somewhere, you know what I mean? And that is going to make a pretty significant difference to their ability to recuperate themselves and that's really really harsh and kind of unrealistic in my opinion so that's kind of the reason why i decided hey you know what i'm actually gonna do something about that and luckily i found a mod that actually gave me that opportunity so anyway i am gonna just rest up here for a real quick second i would like to enter a tournament if at all possible i think i could probably win one and that's going to give us a massive boost in terms of cash. If I don't get any tournament, then I might just go into an arena fight. I was doing a couple of arena fights earlier, and 
I found them actually a lot of fun, so maybe we'll be able to do that. All right, so now that we have restored our HP, and I'm very actually pretty thankful that we haven't been able to recruit any troops. I've been pretty unlucky about this. In my other little test run save that I had uh, about an hour ago, actually, I, uh, I actually did find a lot of units, and I was able to recruit them pretty nicely. Unfortunately... Not this time. Anyway, there we go. We can now join the tournament. All right, let's see how we do here. Bear in mind, we are going to be getting a Heavy Horseman's Mace, which might actually be super good for us, actually. So I'm pretty happy about this. We are going to be going up against actual veterans, however. And, um, <laughs> well, Barney is not particularly the best. Let's just say that. He is actually kind of awful. And I'll be the first one to say that, so let's just be a, a little bit careful here. I'm just going to try and bait out this guy's thrown weapons. He only has four of them. He should only have four of them. And then we're going to be able to do some damage to him in the meantime. Or at least I hope so. Nice. <laughs> that, was a, that was a nice bit of damage right there. That was a good headshot. Yeah, I'm, I'm much better at using thrown weapons than I used to be, to be fair. So I, I'm pretty happy with how we've um, how we've dealt with that. And there you go. Nice early victory right there. And that is exactly what we're going to need because we are now up against <laughs> a Mamluk guard. Oh, dear. Ooh, we got the same. OK, same setup, same setup. OK, I'm looking forward to this because this guy's going to do the same thing. Hopefully he's not going to be that much better than his friend from before. Just going to switch to the throne weapons ahead of time. And let me see. Nice headshot. Oh, I was very much hoping I'd be able to get one last kill on this guy. Well, should we say one last thrown weapon into him? But unfortunately, that is not the case. And there we go. There's a nice victory for us. Actually winning quite handily right here. Actually kind of surprised. Now, bear in mind, I have no money. Okay. I have no money left over. Thankfully, okay, I have um, an Azurai Master Archer on my team, but the enemy also has an Azurai Master Archer, and now it, it just basically comes down to, well, who's going to win this? You know, it's it's whoever has the better Archer, I suppose. Oh, 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 never mind, never mind. Oh, okay, I had no idea. I had no idea that that was how it was uh, set up. They basically, <laughs> they really messed this guy up, didn't they? Yeah, the random assignment of equipment basically sealed that fellow's fate because he basically got the the footman got the archer archer gear and the archer got the footman gear basically. So they had to switch roles and they obviously are not very good at the other's roles. So they um, yeah they got completely outclassed right there, which I'm very pleased about. Unfortunately, my my master archer didn't really do much. So we'll see if that's going to change. Ooh, ah, that was, that was harsh. Ooh, okay, we had to go a little bit harsher there versus that guy. I was actually kind of worried that I'd die there for a second. Yeah, I was actually... Oh, a little bit, a little bit worried, a little bit worried. Okay, so now we finally have a little bit of cash, and that's definitely going to help me out, because obviously we did uh, suffer a pretty, well, I, I'm not going to say significant defeat or anything like that, because generally, I mean, can you really call it a significant defeat if we literally just had to pay 200 or something like that, and we basically lost nothing? I mean, they didn't take anything from me as far as I'm aware, those first initial bandits that we fought. So shouldn't be too bad. Anyway, I'm going to think about actually taking... Um, I'm wondering about this, to be honest. Maybe this. Yeah, it looks okay, right? Looks okay. Okay, yeah, we'll do something like that. I wonder whether they have a bow, actually, because I might be able to level up a bow quite fast. No, it doesn't seem like it. All right, there is a quest, but unfortunately I will not be able to do it because the quest requires many, many more units than I currently have, which is kind of sad. Anyway, morning exercise is what we're going to be taking in the athletics tree. That increases my movement speed by 3%. 
And we have also leveled up our one-handed perk. 2% swing speed with one-handed weapons or increased damage with axes and maces. I'm going to be taking 2% swing speed as, all, as we always do, basically. Anyway, I'm going to see what we can do here. I'm thinking I will level up my medicine, actually. I'd like to make myself the surgeon, so to speak. Because bear in mind, obviously, I have distinguished service installed, which means that we're going to be getting and indeed generating a lot of companions. And we are also going to have the ability to recruit companions ourselves. And because I have a lot of money right now, I should be able to go over here and speak to this guy, for example. How good is he, though? He is pretty, oh, I mean, he's pretty terrible, to be fair. Um, he is um, not, not that, not, I mean, okay, fine, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take that, that judgment back, because he actually has 180 in crossbows, which I think could make him an absolutely deadly sharpshooter. So I'm thinking we'll probably take him, and I'll try to get him a crossbow. It's highly unlikely I'll be able to get him one in Azurai territory, to be fair. Now, I did say that I would attempt to install a faction mod. So, for example, Calradia Expanded Kingdoms or something along those lines. Unfortunately, Calradia Expanded is not updated for this version of the game at the time of recording. So, obviously, I was unable to do that. But that would have been pretty fantastic, in my opinion. That would have been super, super fun to do. But, um, you know, that's just how it is. Sometimes you're unable to do the things that you would otherwise want to because of, um, you know, sometimes uh, people just don't have the time. You know, they just don't, don't have the time to do that. And uh, as far as I'm aware, the creator of Cal Radio Expanded has said that they are working on it. But it is one of those things where... Because the way that Tail Worlds works with mods and everything, they kind of make it a little bit difficult sometimes for the modding community to update all those um, various mechanics and systems. And considering Calradia Expanded is actually a very large mod, it's going to take a little bit longer than otherwise. Okay, so I'll go to the tavern. All right, yeah, so we're going to go to the tavern at Kasura right here. I really don't care about this task at all. The only thing that I am going to be doing is going into the tavern and speaking to this guy as soon as possible, giving him his 1,000 gold, and we are indeed then going to be... Oh, yeah, I should probably sit down first, shouldn't I? There we go. And now we can speak to him. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll just pay you that amount. And then he gives me 800. And I get some uh, I get some charm skill, which I also... I, I guess charm skill is going to be kind of fun and uh, somewhat useful. But generally at the moment, I don't particularly care about it. I basically just want to try and get as many units as possible. I'm trying to recruit some, some regular volunteers here and there. But um, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to do so at the moment. Okay, this guy needs access to the Abgan Commons. I suppose we will indeed. You don't have enough troops. Are you serious? I don't have enough troops. Well, give me some more troops then. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that is a bit of a problem, isn't it? That is indeed a bit of a problem. Uh, every single village seems to be completely out of troops here, which is super weird. Anyway, um, I've actually also installed this other mod, which I actually think is super fun. I mean, most of the mods that I've installed are super fun. And uh, basically what it does is it increases the amount of looters available on the map. And it increases them by a certain percentage. There are uh, various versions available on the download page. But the one that I installed specifically is one that basically doubles the amount of looters on the map at any one time. So for example, um, I mean, this is not a particularly good example to... Uh, showcase right here but basically this group right here would have about two to three instead of five and it's the same thing with much bigger stacks as well but anyway let's go in here and see what we can do obviously i am on foot this is not how it's always going to be by the way i just want to level up my athletic skill as fast as i possibly can so that i can actually move a bit quicker in these battles I'm going to tell my forces to charge in oh yeah by the way i, I don't know whether you know this but whenever you give orders now the game goes into slow motion. I don't think that's how it was every single time, right? No, I don't think so. Anyway, so yeah, now now it has like a slow-mo sort of uh, option, which I actually think is pretty fun. Oh, okay, apparently. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what, 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 what's going on here? What, what actually happened? Okay, apparently I did nothing, and my forces just completely murdered the opponents, which is apparently how things are going to go early on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had no idea that was going to happen. Okay, well, let's go into the trade screen here because I do need to buy some olives, apparently. Let's buy some olives and I'm going to need to buy some Sumter horses as well. Oh, wow, these are super cheap, actually. I have no morale. That's because I have no food. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, let's get some, uh, let's get some more mules here. Going to spend a little bit... I'm going to spend a little bit of extra cash because I would like to try and appease my forces. And there we go. Okay, maybe I'll be able to do another tournament relatively soon as well. And, and this is also gonna level up my steward skill, which is gonna be quite nice. I'm thinking we might level up steward skill as well because there is a fantastic perk by the name of Paid in Promise. And there is also another perk called Giving Hands, which is probably some of the best perks possible that they've added in the steward tree in my opinion because it basically allows you to donate armor and weapons for the sake of leveling up your troops which i very much like anyway let's see what we can do here oh <laughs> this is new this is new in the charm skill tree it is called virile and it has a 30 percent more likely chance to have children and uh, you also have a governor perk there as well, but I'm not going to read out the governor perks for the most part in this series. Okay, so self-promoter is the other option, which gives you the ability to gain five influence by winning a tournament. All right. Uh, I personally don't care about that at all. So I'm going to be taking Virile here, and I think I'm actually going to be leveling up my charm skill, because here's the thing. Charm skill was more was basically already maxed out. Steward skill still has a little bit of time to go, so we're just going to do that for the moment. I also downloaded a mod that allows me to level up my caravan uh, trade XP because the previous one was causing crashes. Yeah, it was causing crashes, so that's not particularly good. Anyway, um, I'd like to find a big stack of looters, if at all possible. I'm actually not entirely sure why we're not finding massive groups of, of looters, to be fair, because... I'm, I'm, I installed that for a very specific reason. I thought to myself, oh yes, that is going to be a perfect idea, you know, get bigger and bigger looter parties and then I'll be able to, you know, make some good cash or get some good experience or something. But apparently that is not my fate in this one. Oh yeah, they also added a really, really cool thing which I, I think you've probably noticed by now, but basically whenever an enemy or a neutral party or whatever comes into your view, you can see their speed almost immediately. It only stays for a couple of seconds, which I think I, I understand why it disappears because obviously they want to try and avoid screen clutter as much as possible, but I actually prefer if it stayed there for a little bit longer. I, I don't think there's an option to change that. At least I have checked through the uh, I checked through the options and I did not see anything in that regard. So I'm not entirely sure. Maybe uh, maybe I missed it or something. But um, yeah, I think it would actually be really cool if they they left the speed on there because I think it's pretty important information and maybe I'm gonna miss it. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm gonna miss. How, how fast this guy is, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's attacking me and I'm about to die. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway, let's take a look here. Okay, so we are going to recruit these guys and then we're going to go into another tournament. Obviously, tournaments generally are the best way to make cash, at least early on. And we're going to see how we do here. Okay, we're going to get another 2,000. Bear in mind, these do have um, diminishing returns, so that's a bit of an issue. Okay, wait a minute. I'm just trying to bait out his thrown weapons at the moment. There we go. Okay. Nice. <laughs> I was just waiting for that. Just waiting for that. Perfect. Okay, nice. Okay, wait a minute. I've still got two left. Oh, he blocked them. I can't... Oh, he's a veteran. Yep. Oh, I'm... 
I'm literally trying to hit him with my fist. <laughs> ah, yes, I, yes, uh, uh, Barney hit himself in his confusion. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. That's basically that. Oh, wow. I'm actually kind of surprised that he did not block that attack, considering it's an overhead, and overheads are a little bit slow, you know? They're a little bit slow to come out, so, yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Nice. Nice little victory right there. And it's, once again, a free-for-all. Okay. So, once again, just base out. Uh, this guy's a palace guard. Okay, I'm a little bit... Ooh, ooh, okay, yeah, I'm worried about this guy. Oh, okay. Was unable to hit this guy at all. He was just playing way too defensively, but he seems to not really know how to... <laughs> okay, he doesn't know how to really fight, apparently. Oh, this guy also doesn't know how to fight. He just got hit in the face by a massive javelin. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That is very nice indeed. Okay. So let's just bet the last of our cash. This is basically a do or die situation here because if I fail, oh no, they gave me a bow. Oh dear. Okay, I have some I have some bow skill, so it's not terrible, but it is going to be terrible. Yes. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind. I actually have who do I have? Veteran infantry on my side. Okay, he's going to absolutely murder this guy then. Yeah, as you can see. Wow. What a beast. What a beast. Okay, good work, sir. Good work. Okay, now it is me versus him. And I have the ability to get this uh, tier 3 head armor. So it's going to be... I'm, I'm going to say it's pretty good. You know, that's a pretty nice upgrade. As considering, you know, this is pretty early on. And it's going to be for free as well. So I'm looking forward to it. So let me actually just be a bit careful here. Don't want to get shot in the face. Okay, no, no, not too bad, not too bad. I thought to myself, okay, yeah, we're, we're probably going to take a little bit of damage here, maybe get down to a little bit lower, but thankfully he just really wasn't really knowing what to do. So there you go. All right, so we were able to achieve victory there. I'm going to be equipping this because literally this is just a massive upgrade, super, super good upgrade. And I'm still hoping that I'm going to be able to find, ah, there is a bow here, but unfortunately this is not a bow that I'll be able to utilize. Kind of sad. Yeah, that is kind of sad that I wasn't able to level up my bow skill any further in the tournament. But, oh well, never mind. That's just how it goes sometimes. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I think we can probably continue onward. And um, we can try to find some more looters. I mean, basically, that's the only thing I, can, I really need to do right now. Because I do have a task that um, rewards me for... Oh, wow. They only have four... Really? Four days remaining? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, that's that's really not gonna work. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm basically done. I think I don't think I'm gonna be able to to complete that in any way. Oh well, never mind. Okay, now we have leveled up our steward skill to 25. Let's see what we have here. Party wages are five percent less. Recruitment costs are also reduced, and party consumes ten percent less food and no morale penalty from having a single type of food. I'm gonna probably take Spartan. I generally always take this because. Consuming 10% less food, especially when you have an army that is like, I don't even know, 400, 500, 600 strong, that's going to that's gonna be pretty important, you know? It's going to be pretty important, so we'll, we'll just do that. I suppose it is just party as well. I don't think it actually reduces the amount that an army consumes, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe the wording is a little bit, um, a little bit different than what I imagine, but otherwise I'm going to be increasing my steward skill right here and just continue increasing uh, intelligence i guess all right so we are nearby to the village i'm gonna go off into the aha hello there okay this might be a little bit uh, a little bit harsh we'll see what happens okay so we're gonna level up these guys there we are 
I'm kind of surprised they haven't leveled up more, to be fair. Okay, this is... Uh, I think I might be dead here, actually. I think I might be dead, because these guys have horses. I, uh, I think you can see that. Yeah, you can see that from all the way over here. And my guys do not. Okay, Polmark. Polmark Deadeye. You will survive, sir. What a beautiful face you have. Yes. Well, that's enough of that. Let's attack. Oh, really? Really? Okay. Oh, he is an absolute monster, this guy. Paul Mark. How is he doing so... <laughs> How is he doing so much damage? Look at him. He's doing so much damage that it is just literally... Every single person that is getting into range of this guy... He's literally just evaporating, pretty much. I can't believe it. Okay, there we go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's be a bit careful here myself. Oh, I do not want to die again, please. Okay, there's my forces. My forces coming in. Nice. Maybe I can continue to deal damage. Nice. Okay, there we go. We gained a level. That's exactly what we want. But can I survive? That is the one thing that I really, really badly want to do. Oh, it seems like we are able to survive, amazingly enough. And, oh dear, now we have to deal with the enemy, uh, enemy enemy cavalry. Thankfully, I have a lot more experience using throwing weapons now, so I should be able to utilize these against cavalry units if they actually decide to charge straight at me. Oh, no, never mind, they are actually not deciding to charge straight at me, but they are um, getting knocked off their mount. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello there, sir. Ooh, I hit his shield. Okay, I hit his shield. That was unlucky. Unlucky that he put that up at the last second right there. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That is the kind of thing I'm talking about right there. That was super, super funny and extremely satisfying as well. But look at... Look at we, we literally almost failed. We almost, almost died. If it wasn't for Polmark right there, I feel like Polmark actually completely murdered every single person. But I know that's not the case. But he killed... Oh. He actually only killed three. I'm kind of surprised that he only killed three, to be honest. Oh well. Never mind. I now have all the prisoners that I need for my, um, you know, for my uh, for my task, which is fantastic because I only have a few days remaining on that, and we do now have the ability to equip some new things as well, which is quite nice. And bear in mind that I am going to be equipping Polmark in some relatively good stuff. And can you imagine? I was literally, I was literally saying that this guy was terrible. You know, I was basically saying, hey, this guy, he's, he's not going to know what to do, right? You know, I was um, kind of down on him uh, <laughs> initially. And uh, now all of a sudden, he's just carrying us through uh, every single fight so far, which I think is hilarious. Okay, so... Uh, I don't have any gloves for him at the moment, but we do have a shield, so I'm going to give him a shield. He's really good at one-handed as well, which I'm I'm pretty happy about. And we are going to be, I think, I, yeah, I guess taking all the loot. There we go. All right, so I am in a really, really bad spot right now because all my forces are, oh dear. Yeah, maybe we can work out something, sir. Oh, you only want 600. Oh, you only want 600. Yes, please. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Okay, <laughs> that is amazing. I love it when they, I love it when they're kind of a little bit, um, a little bit dense, you know. I love it when those guys are a little bit dense when they enter negotiations with you and they just go, um, you, know, you have over seven thousand gold. Well, well, just give me seven gold. That's fine, you know. It's that, it's that, <laughs> it's that kind of feeling. That's absolutely fantastic. All right, so I brought you a few men. Yes, I have. And there we go. This is going to give us a massive amount of gold, by the way. 9,100. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, really nice. Now let's have a look here. We have a medicine perk to spend. Increased character healing rate by 30% and increases character's movement speed by 2%. I am always going to take self-medication. That is just way too good to pass up. Uh, while on foot, your weapon handling is increased by 10% or decrease your armor weight by 15%. I'm going to decrease the armor weight. I'd like to try and move around a little bit quicker. 
increase your drawing speed with throwing weapons by 20% or you deal 40% more damage with throwing weapons against shields. All right, so I'm not actually going to use throwing weapons. It just so happens that I have gotten throwing weapons skill and I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be using this. So I'm actually going to be taking quick draw because increase your drawing speed with throwing weapons. I think that's much better than 40% more damage with throwing weapons against shields because if you do eventually get to 250 throwing weapon skill, that is going to allow your javelins to penetrate shields completely like ballista bolts, like it says here in the description. And that, well, that doesn't require you to destroy the shield first. So drawing speed is the way to go if you're thinking about end game. And we've also gotten a perk in one-handed as well. Your one-handed weapon damage is increased by 5% while mounted. I really hate using one-handed on a mount, so I won't be doing that. However, reducing the effect of wielding a shield on your combat movement speed, I will be taking that. Thank you very much. Okay, so I have two attribute points to spend, and I also have two focus points to spend. So what am I going to be going for? Well, I'm probably going to be trying to increase my bow skill now, even though I'd actually like my medicine skill increased a bit more too. Maybe leadership. <laughs> oh no, there's just so much. Okay, we're going to go for trade. We're going to go for bow. Then we're going to go for one point in control. One, how should I go for one point in endurance? I don't know. My endurance is, I, I mean, smithing. I am going to level up smithing because we need to make a little bit more money. You know, we need to make money eventually. And um, I'm not going to make anything that's super overpowered or anything like that. So I'm not going to be making, you know, hundreds of thousands of gold with one item because I think that's unrealistic. But... I will be making a couple of weapons, not but not too not too extravagant, but you know, just a little bit, just to help us along sometimes. I'm gonna go for another point in intelligence. I know that seems maybe a little bit overkill, but I'm really wanting to try and level up those skills. Leveling up steward and leveling up medicine is, is kind of important to me at the moment. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to Kasira. Now, here's the thing. Obviously, as you know, I do have a mod installed that makes it possible for caravans to provide me with trade experience. And I am actually going to... Okay, apparently I am not going to do that. I was actually hoping that there would be another companion here for me to recruit so that I could make them into a caravan master. And I was very much hoping that they would have trade skill already. Because, yeah, the way that this new mod works, by the way, the, uh, the caravan mod, it actually works um, a little bit differently than the previous version. And uh, basically what this does is, um, as far as I'm aware, it checks to see how much profit is made and then uh, calculates something from that. I, I read the description, but I can't remember what it exactly is now, so... Uh, take that with a grain of salt, but generally I'm I'm liking the fact that it's actually not crashing my game. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much all I really want from a mod. You know, as long as it doesn't crash, I'm I'm all good. You know, as long as it does something useful and is interesting and fun to use, I am happy with that. All right, so we have army of poachers. I'm thinking we're probably going to do that. But unfortunately, my units are just so incredibly lackluster at the moment. Okay, what about a bow? Is a bow here? No, it seems like bows are very hard to come by. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but it seems like it's a little bit tricky. All right, let's take a look at the tavern. Okay, this guy actually does have the ability to um, potentially defend something. Yeah, you know what? Okay, let's recruit this guy and see if I can get a caravan. Bear in mind, because we are a part of the Azurai culture, we do have the ability to construct or indeed recruit a caravan for a very cheap price in comparison to other cultures. So you can see here, it's only going to cost me 10000 And I think that's fantastic. I think that's a really, really good cheap price. So Atal on the boar is going to be leading this caravan. I don't care about his gear, by the way. I'm not going to be outfitting all of my caravans with really, really good gear until much later in the series. I will be attempting to focus on, on companions that I'm going to be keeping in my party, so don't worry about that. So, Polmark, for example, he's going to get the best possible treatment. Atalon, on the other hand, well, he's just a trader, so... We're just going to basically leave him to his own devices for the most part. So, Atalon, go, go, sir. Yes, go, go. And hopefully he's going to do a good job there. All right. Um, can I even do this task? 
I can. <laughs> uh, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to do this? Because I am uh, kind of... Um, I don't want to say anything, but I'm kind of incompetent, you know? I'm kind of incompetent. Oh well, never mind. Oh, we're looking pretty cool in the red, actually. I like the red coloring that we have at the moment. I feel like that's super fun. All right, so before we actually go over there, there is another tournament going on, so I might like to do that. A fine steel leaf spear. That could sell for quite a lot. This is a huge, huge battle. Oh, they've given me a spell. Okay, this is, oh, this is cool. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. This is going to give me the opportunity to level up my riding skill. Obviously, I have a massive amount in endurance at the moment, so I should be able to gain some pretty decent riding experience and hopefully not die. <laughs> hopefully not die in the process. I mean, that's, that's, that's one wish to have, isn't it? Yes, please just don't die in this tournament. There we go. Going to hit a couple of people along the way. I'm going to make a fool of myself. Attempting to do damage to some of them. Is Paul Mark already eliminated? I don't... No, no, he's, he's alive. He's, he's still alive. He's part of the blue team. Kind of wish that my companions would be on my team, to be honest. Ooh, that... Wait a minute. Is that Rosanna? Yeah, that is Rosanna. Okay. Oh, dear. I think that is indeed her. That could be problematic. Or not, as the case may be, because apparently Polmark is an absolute monster and he basically just kills every single person that goes up against him. Please do not kill me, Polmark. He wants to kill me. <laughs> he's, he's, he's out for blood today. He is out for blood. Yeah, okay, this is kind of bad. Uh, throne weapons? Throne weapons? Okay, we got, we got one. And they are right behind me. Yes, they are. They are coming. Okay, here we go. Oh, we got him in the face! Oh, I was about to hit the other guy as well, but um, unfortunately I missed by a very small margin. This is bad. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's bash him. Get the axe. Yes! I picked up Paul Mark's axe. That was amazing. I have never, ever in my life been able to actually do that appropriately without taking any damage in the process. Wow, that was pretty close. That was pretty close. Okay, so let's have a look. Who are we up against? Polmark did not make it. Wow, okay. Polmark did not make it to the next round. I actually wonder why that is. Kind of surprised. Okay, we, we, gotta, we gotta be careful here. We gotta be careful. I could potentially die here kind of easily. was easy enough wasn't it and that actually marks the 100th one-handed skill point that we have so that is hopefully then going to help us a little bit that uh, 100 level perk did you see that really nice spin move by the way i didn't want to pat myself on the back but i thought that was uh, that was pretty good you know, that's not too bad that's definitely something that i've learned over the time using thrown weapons where you can literally just turn on a swivel and then you can basically be like oh yes there we go <laughs> that's a nice little surprise for the opponent and you don't have to necessarily switch to your one handed like I'm doing right now you can basically just try and run away a little bit nice alright Whew. Okay, I'm a little bit tense, a little bit tense, because we've been up against some pretty harsh competition right here. Okay, Mamluk Palisk. Okay, they're bringing out the big guns. Yes, they're bringing out the big guns indeed. A Mamluk Palace guard. Certainly someone that I would like to... Wow, he hit that? 
Okay. Maybe I walked into it. Yeah, he seems pretty accurate with these. Wow, that was that was kind of close too. Nice. We got him in the neck. Oh wow, he he I don't even know. Sometimes these guys are so incredibly defensive, very reactive and extremely difficult to deal with and other times they are literally just like, well, that and they just do some weird stuff not entirely sure what's going on there but anyway there we go we ended up winning amazingly and uh, we're now going to go over here and wait for these poachers to show themselves i'm actually hoping that i'll be able to negotiate with them potentially because even though i'd like the experience i'd like to have an opportunity to maybe level up my charm skill a little bit more Mm, yeah, I, I mean, I could definitely use an upgrade with my charm skill, and it would be quite nice to mm, maybe gain another perk, maybe. Oh, well, uh, we have two perks. One is polearm, and the other is one-handed. So let's have a look here. What do we have? Crystal damage with polearms by 2%. That sounds pretty good. And that doesn't require me to be on a mount or anything like that. And then otherwise, we have duelist. 20% more damage while wielding a one-handed weapon without a shield. And also, you get double renown from tournaments. Sounds pretty fun, right? Yeah, I think I'm probably going to be taking that because we are currently getting 20 renown from tournaments. So if I do take this, then I'm going to get 40 renown from it. Bear in mind, if we are fighting without a shield, which is highly probable in this series, actually, because I might decide to go for one-handed, bow, and two quivers. That sounds like a pretty viable, pretty viable equipment build, but um, I, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. What do you think? What do you think about that? But I'm gonna take Duelist nevertheless, whether we use a shield or not, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to make the most of things. Okay, let's negotiate with this guy. Let's have a look. Okay, maybe we can come to an agreement. All right, okay, you really do not want to come to an agreement here, apparently. Okay, there we go. Good success. 81% chance. <laughs> We're never going to be able to do this. Uh, your word is your bond. Okay, apparently, no, no, they don't care about that. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go for 64%. Okay, phew, that actually was a success. And that means... They, you, what, that was it? Okay. <laughs> well, I, uh, I guess I wanted that, right? I guess I wanted a, a quick resolution, a quick, simple resolution right there. I was actually hoping for a little bit more charm skill, but I suppose we're not really, you know, having any of the big decisions just yet anyway, so I guess it doesn't really make much sense for us to gain, I don't know, you know, 2,000 points in charm or something like that, but no. I mean, considering the fact we don't even have any focus points in it apart from one, so yeah, that, that obviously is logical to assume that you're not going to get that much from it. Anyway, let's hope that we can actually find some looters. I would love to be able to find some looters at the moment. Uh, these guys are criminals, so probably not going to do anything with that. I wouldn't mind actually finding another companion if at all possible, so let me actually just go into the tavern here. Who's this guy? Uh, he's not bad, but he has some pretty bad traits, because here's the thing, eventually I would like these guys to become vassals of mine, and you can do that in the more recent versions of Bannerlord. You can basically create vassals or create new clans out of companions if you have the required influence and money and obviously a thief to give them. So with that in mind, I would actually like to have people that have decent personality types. And I'm talking about people that are not, well, bad, quote unquote. Um, I don't think he's dishonorable or anything like that. Because as you can see, he's actually got Valor 1. So I don't think he's particularly bad. But generally, I'd like to avoid characters that have... A massive amount of bad traits. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Okay, Paul Mark actually does have the perk that I was a bit wary of. He is devious and is more than likely going to absolutely stab me in the back. But he's such a beast. 
I don't know. Uh, maybe you know what? Maybe I just don't make him.、Uh, you know, maybe I just don't make him a vassal. Maybe I just make him a personal bodyguard of mine, or something along those lines. Maybe that's going to be a better, a better option for me, or something, so that he doesn't have the opportunity to pick up that dagger and go stab, stab, stab. Anyway, wait a minute. We've got some looters over. Okay. Oh, 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 hello. That's a slightly, slightly larger party. I'm looking forward to attacking these guys. All right.、Uh, let me just make sure. Ah, there is a steward. Stuart perk that I need to spend here. Okay, all troops gain daily experience, or tier four plus troops gain daily experience. Okay, I, I, I don't really. I mean, four daily experience is basically nothing, and two is also nothing. I mean, it's really, really bad. Um, I'm thinking we might go for the militia per day because if the governor skill does actually apply, if the if the player character owns a town, then that's in my opinion a little bit stronger than garrison wages being five percent less. So I'm probably going to take seven veterans here, even though I. I think both of them are kind of unappealing, to be honest. Okay, yeah, this is actually the new thing. This is one of the new features that they have implemented. I have no idea how this works, to be honest. But as far as I'm aware, it's kind of like Total War, where you basically select someone. So let's say you're selecting these,、um, well, this one archer. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this guy? I have no idea who this guy is. But yeah, you can basically select him, and then you can pretty much put him anywhere you want, as you can see right there. So you can basically put him anywhere, and then you can change his、um, his formation as well. So if I want to change this guy into a、uh, into a loose formation, boom. Then I can do that straight away, and it's the same thing. You can actually select them with the number keys as well, so you don't have to literally go and, you know, select them or anything like that. You can just do it any way you want. And as far as I'm aware, you can actually, yeah, yeah, as you can see right here, you can actually、um, assign people to other formations as well. So, for example, if I wanted to go for Uh, actually, I don't want to do it on、um, seven. I think that's kind of weird. So let's put it on.、Um, let's put it on this. So, for example, if I want to select infantry and archers, then I can just put that as infantry and ranged on four, and then boom. Then I have selected both of those.、Uh, actually, wait a minute. Why am I selecting the?、Uh, why am I selecting the cavalry as well? Okay, that's kind of weird. I'm not entirely sure why that would be happening. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just not understanding how this works. But otherwise, you can actually choose commanders as well. So, for example, you can see Paul Mark right here. He's level 16, so technically we can t tell him to command some things, or we can、uh, you know choose myself. I'm gonna choose Paul Mark to lead the infantry because I think he's an absolute monster, and we can basically just let him do his own thing right there. And、um, yeah, otherwise I think we're pretty much ready, and let's go. Let's see what happens. I actually wonder what Paul Mark's gonna do. Is he actually gonna do anything with the infantry? Because it feels to me like he's not doing anything. I'm a little bit.、Um, well, I was actually kind of intrigued to see what he would do, but apparently he's doing nothing. So I guess we will just charge in. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? Okay, let's see if I can get a little bit of experience here. I'm not holding out much hope, to be honest. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's obviously much better, by the way, to get experience in real battles rather than tournaments.、Uh, with the updated version of Chaos's tweaks, basically what you can do is if you go into the tournament section of the menu, you can make it so that you earn more experience than a、um, than the native game, basically. So if you Have、um, I don't know. Let's say you have、uh, like I do at the moment. I am currently earning two times the amount of experience because obviously this is a series. Generally, I want to make it so that the progression is kind of smooth and we don't have to wait around and I don't have to fight thousands upon thousands of bandits to level up my forces. So obviously that makes sense, right? Now here's the thing: in tournaments in native, you earn I believe thirty three percent of normal experience. That means a hundred percent is reduced to thirty-three percent when you're in a tournament. I personally think this is kind of、um, 
I, I, I don't really know why you why you know why this needed to be done, but I I understand. I mean, I kind of understand why because people would just basically stay in tournaments and just continually do those and then level up in a completely risk-free environment. So obviously, it does make sense in that regard. But on the one hand, it kind of doesn't make sense in a realistic fashion because if you think about it realistically, if you're in a tournament, you're still going to be gaining a decent amount of experience. And maybe, I, I don't know, maybe it does make sense. I don't know. I mean, generally a tournament, you're going to take it pretty seriously. If it's to the death, which obviously, you know, Battle Lord tournaments are not, but let's say, you know, in real life, let's say it's to the death, then obviously you're going to take it pretty seriously. But, <laughs> oh well, never mind, never mind. Anyway, let's go in here. Let's see if I can do some damage. Can I, can I please do some damage? <sighs> yes, but, um, yeah, so my, uh, my tournament experience was set to, I believe it was 80 or 90%. Because I didn't want it to be full, you know, I didn't want it to be like native, but I didn't also want it to be at 33%. So that's the reason why you saw me gaining a little bit of extra experience over the time that I was in there. But when I go into an actual battle, that 80 to 90% increases to 200%. So that's the reason why I'm gaining much more skill than when I was in the tournament, which I got to say, I very much appreciate because otherwise, yeah, as I say, it takes a long time. So, um, yeah, that, that I'm just, I'm, I'm basically trying to give you a good amount of transparency with my settings as well, so that you can basically emulate the same thing if you want to in your own game. Because I think it's kind of important if you want to play along for you to experience the same things that I'm experiencing. Anyway, let's have a look here. I have athletics increase. And um, <laughs> I find this kind of funny. Increased crafting stamina recovery rate by 50%. I think that's good. I'm not entirely sure if they've changed it so that when you move around, your stamina increases or rec or recuperates over time in comparison to how it used to be before, where you basically had to wait in a town or quote unquote, wait for some time in a town, in a village, in a castle, something like that for your stamina to recover. So I think this is good. If you're going to be playing a smithing character, which I'm, I'm not really going to be doing, so I'm going to go for increasing your persuasion chance and increasing party size by five. I mean, I personally don't really care about the party size increase that much, but increasing my persuasion chance is always something that I'm looking forward to. Uh, let's increase my charm skill a little bit, and let's also increase my social. And then we'll move on. All right. So, um, yeah, I, I, have, I haven't actually said what kinds of units I'm going to be using, right? Well, obviously, I'm going to be attempting to level up as many um, as many people as possible, and then hopefully extinguished extinguished. <laughs> no, it's not extinguished service. This is not the fire department. It is disting distinguished, distinguished service. Yes, indeed, it is distinguished service. So I'm hopeful that I'll be able to um, level up a couple of people into companions. And um, I think they need, I think they need five kills or ten kills. I think one. I think some of these some of these units need quite a few kills to be able to become, um, to be able to become. Uh, companions so hopefully they are going to be able to do that and if not then well we're just gonna have to deal with things I'm not entirely sure oh wait a minute look at this oh now this is looking good this is looking real good okay this is definitely something that I have wanted ever since I installed that mod I have wanted to see a massive looter stack and this is exactly what we've got going on here. All right, 34 versus 54. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, Paul Mark, let's do this. He's, he really doesn't care, does he? No, he really doesn't care one bit. He's just like, I am an absolute monster. I can kill people in one hit with whatever weapon I'm using. What weapon is he using, by the way? I have no idea. Didn't I give him a weapon, or is he using some kind of rusty sword or something like that? I wouldn't be surprised if he's using a rusty sword, to be honest. Anyway, let's see, let's see what I can do here. I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge in, and we might as well tell our infantry to charge in, too. I'll leave my archers back up here. I actually like the slow-mo. I, um, 
I've heard quite a few things about people complaining about the slow motion actually. And people are saying that they don't really like it when they give orders and the game slows down. Personally, I actually quite like it because it does give you that opportunity to sort of think a little bit. It gives you an opportunity to take a look at what's currently going on and maybe gives you an opportunity to make a, a slightly better decision. Because let's face it, if you're currently being charged at by huge amounts of units and it's real time, you're probably going to just make a rushed decision and maybe that decision isn't going to be something that you'd like and maybe the slow motion gives you that little extra time to make a good decision. I don't know, maybe maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, there we go. We were able to defeat them uh, pretty easily, actually. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised about that, to be fair, but I mean, obviously they are just looters and we are now running around with tier four units and it's actually tier fives. <laughs> we actually have some tier fives, amazingly enough. All right, so let's just move on. We'll take all the loot. And um, I'm actually wondering, is there another one of those looter quests nearby? Because if there is another manual laborer quest, I should be able to make some extremely lucrative deals. But it's highly unlikely that they're going to have anything like that, right? I mean, usually that's kind of... It's one of those rarer tasks. I, I know sometimes they come up way too often and then you think to yourself, well, I barely have any prisoners right now. But as soon as you have prisoners, they all just manage to disappear some random way or another. Anyway, let's have a look here. Uh, no, you need tools. Yeah, these villages always need tools for some reason. I have no idea why that is the case, but otherwise we have the ability to go over here. Maybe there's going to be something that we can do in uh, this particular village because this is usually one of the villages that has manual laborers because it is a silver ore village and I, ass I assume they need, you know, they need miners, they need manual laborer, laborers for, um, for the mines, you know, that kind of makes sense, right? Okay, these guys need help with brigands. That would actually be a fantastic thing to do if we had a manual laborer quest. But we do not. Ah, seems like the manual laborer quest is completely disappeared. Ah oh, well, never mind. Doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do anything with that at the moment. So what I'm actually going to do is we're going to level up medicine once again. And I'm actually going to level up my control now because eventually I am going to be getting a bow. And hopefully I'll be able to use that uh, to good effect. Because obviously at the moment I only have 20 bow skill. And I am going to need much more to be able to use the, the better bows that are available. And it's been a long time since I've used a bow. So it's going to be a lot of fun to try that out again because as you can no doubt tell well maybe you can't i don't know but generally i am much better at using thrown weapons than i used to be and now i'm going to be probably trash at using a bow let's face it that's kind of the thing that happens okay do i have enough grain seeds for no i do not really are you serious that i do not how many grain seeds do i actually have 10 <laughs> oh, of course. And I need 41. Okay, okay. Well, that's um, that's understandable. That is definitely understandable that I don't have enough. Yeah, it seems like my forces literally go through food like no one's business. I have no idea why they're going through food so fast, but oh well, never mind. That's just how it is. I mean, I, I, I guess I actually have a pretty large army at the moment. I mean, it's pretty early on, I guess, right? Is it, is it pretty early on? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, let's go over here. Maybe we do have some grain. Yeah, they have a massive amount of grain. We're going to buy a whole bunch. Well, we'll just buy a whole bunch of food in general. Try and make sure that our steward skill continues to level up as much as possible. And we get, wow, we just spent a cool 3,700. I did not mean to do that. I'm not used to having a limited amount of cash because in the last few series, we've been, well, swimming in, in money. And uh, yeah, okay. I need to be a little bit more careful with that. There's actually another tournament here, another tournament here, so I might actually decide to do that uh, myself, so you don't have to watch another one of those. Oh, there's a whole bunch of looter parties around here as well. Oh, wait, wait, this might be a manual labor quest. No, they need draft animals. Ah, really? Are you serious? I'm actually super surprised about that. Usually, both of those villages that we've just gone by, there's you know the one that. Um, 
is nearby to Kuyas and the other one that we just went to just now, they are usually well known for having manual labor requests, but apparently this time they don't. So I guess that's, uh, I guess that's just how it's going to have to be. Maybe I'll have to sell my, sell my prisoners at the tavern instead, because otherwise I'm basically just wasting money here, you know? Anyway, we have now reached 50 in charm. Increase influence gain from battles. I'm thinking we're probably going to be doing that. Oh, they've changed the secondary effects of these of these perks. Seems like they've reworked the charm skill tree. I'm actually liking these quite a bit because you can see here the second um, the second uh, perks uh, and the benefits here are every time you defeat an enemy lord party, you gain one relationship with a random notable of your faction. That's super cool in my opinion. I, I like that a whole bunch. And then the other one is every time you defeat an enemy lord party, you gain one relationship with a random lord of your faction. I think that's super cool too. I'm going to be taking oratory though, which is the thing that increases your relation with a random notable. Because I personally think it's a lot easier to gain relation with lords than it is to gain relation with nobles and things like that. So I'm actually going to be going for this one, even though I personally think that gaining 30% more influence from battles is a much better perk than one renown and one influence for each issue resolved. I personally don't, I don't think that's good at all, but who knows? Maybe it's going to be a little bit better than I anticipate. Anyway, we're going to be going for workshops owned by you, have a 20% increased production, and siege engines are built 20% faster. That's what we're going to be taking in the steward skill tree. That sounds pretty good to me. All right, so I'm actually just going to go into this castle real quick. I... Wait a minute. What? Uh, who, who has the Who has the quest? Request a meeting with... What? Hello? Uh, do you have... Oh, okay. Uh, so actually, never mind. Okay, apparently... Um, if I have no idea where the task is. Apparently, no one has the task here. I have no idea. Oh, well, never mind. Maybe this person... Uh, or should we say maybe this village has it? No, they need draft animals as well. Well, nevertheless, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. I uh, actually would like to play more, but I think we have gone well over time at this point. I actually thought, hey, you know what, let's just, you know, play and see how it goes. But I'm actually enjoying this a whole bunch. I don't know why, but I think the new version of Bannerlord and all of these mods that I've installed, they make everything so much more enjoyable. I don't know. I mean, the, the newest version, obviously, in conjunction with all these mods. Super cool. Anyway, check the description if you're interested about any of the mods that I have. And uh, otherwise, I hope you'll continue to join me on this journey. And we will attempt to uh, take over the entirety of Calradia. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.